Welcome in my fellow fitness enthusiasts to today's fitness instructional video coming to you from Revision Training LLC, where our mission is to make fitness accessible to you, whether you're visually impaired, fully sighted, doesn't matter. We want to make sure you guys get it. My name is Tyler Marin. I'm the owner of Revision Training LLC. I'm a three-time Paralympic athlete, motivational speaker, personal trainer, and overall fitness enthusiast. Today we're talking about something that is super crucial for almost anybody, especially if you're trying to be an athlete. Okay, so we're talking about jump training. We're talking about plyometrics. Okay, we're talking about leaving the ground, extending your body, creating a lot of power. Okay, so if you think this video is not for you, I want you to stick with me for just a second because like all of the other instructions that I give you guys, this might just be something that is very beneficial for you, even if you're starting off at a lighter level, you're not trying to be a super athlete or anything like that. There are some great benefits that you can get from this type of training. So let's first talk about it. Definition, okay? So we're gonna go through four different areas today. We're gonna define what are plyometrics. We're gonna talk about some of the benefits. We'll go through some of the applications and I'm gonna give you guys some examples today. There are some other instructional videos that are gonna come out where I'm gonna give you guys some actual workouts to do with plyometrics. But for today, let's learn about it. Let's know what it is, okay? Definition of a plyometric. Essentially, it's an exercise that is produced at its full maximum capacity, its full ability in a short duration of time in order to produce greater strength and power. Let's water that down just a little bit so that we can get a sense of what that means. Essentially, exercise, you can think of it on a spectrum, okay? So when it comes to plyometrics, at the one end of the, uh, of the spectrum, furthest away from the plyometric scene, we're talking about slow, methodical, mechanical movements. This is not a bad thing, so don't misunderstand that one is good and the other is bad but it's just different. It affects your body in a different way. So if I'm gonna do a squat, I've got my feet hip width, toes pointed straight ahead, my back is straight. I'm gonna not make this a plyometric movement, totally slow controlled. I'm pushing my hips back. I'm sitting my weight down nice and low, driving up through my heels and back up to my starting position. That is a standard squat, okay? If I put weights on my shoulders or I'm holding onto dumbbells, I'm just adding resistance to it still very good for my body. Now, to make that a plyometric movement, to push it to the other side of the spectrum, now I'm gonna speed up that movement. I'm going to come down and I'm going to push up hard enough that I'm actually leaving the floor. So I came down kind of slow, but I pushed up, jumped up off my toes and landed softly. So that's just an example, we'll get into more of those, of the difference between plyometric and non-plyometric, right? Again, neither is good or bad necessarily, they just do different things, okay? So let's talk about that. What is the benefit of a plyometric? Why should we do it versus not, okay? First of all, not doing plyometrics doesn't mean you're, you're not gonna be healthy, okay? You can go through your entire life without doing plyometrics or jump training and still be a healthy individual. However, what are some of the benefits? Number one, when you add in plyometric movements, you are increasing your overall intensity. Okay, so going from that slow squat to coming down and exploding up, it requires a bit more force production from your muscles to actually leave the ground. Okay, so you are increasing your intensity just slightly. That's a really important thing if you're looking at challenging yourself and producing greater gains. Okay, something else that it does, it increases power. Okay, the difference between strength and power is simply a time factor. Strength is very important for everyday activities. Okay, if I'm gonna pick up the garbage and, and lift it up and put it in the garbage bin out of the kitchen, that takes strength. If I am going to uh, throw a ball as fast as I can, that takes both strength and speed, which is what power is all about. Athletes want power. And 99% of athletics is all about power, not so much about strength, because strength is a component of power. I think you guys got that. I don't want to beat that up too much. So some of the benefits of plyometrics. Number one, if you're an athlete, 
you want to do plyometrics because it's gonna make you faster and stronger. Number two, if you're just a general, everyday, average person just wanting to be healthy, plyometrics will increase your intensity, typically, and it can help you learn a lot of body control. So those are some of the benefits to it. Very, very great to mix in. It's gonna be a lot of fun as well when you mix in to uh, your routine some different plyometric movements. So let's talk about some of the applications then. Just like any other form of exercise, plyometrics comes in a variety of shades and colors. So you can think about plyometrics, again, different spectrums. On one end, I'm thinking about, I wanna just develop as much power as I can in one single movement. So I am going to do a squat jump, I'm gonna do a vertical jump, I'm gonna reach up as high as I can, and I'm just gonna give it everything into this one movement. I'm set up, I'm gonna squat down and jump up as high as I can, and that's my, my plyometric movement, okay? I'm an athlete, I'm trying to develop just as much power as I can and explode into that movement. Or, you take that exact same movement and you shift it down the spectrum just a little bit and you think, I am more of a, more focused on cardiovascular endurance. I want to build up, yes, my power, but I am going to focus on building up my endurance as well. So I'm gonna take that squat jump movement, instead of thinking about maximum explosion every single time, I'm gonna do squat jump up, then squat jump again then squat jump again. I'm gonna set a timer, I'm gonna do squat jumps for uh, 30 seconds or 45 seconds or 60 seconds or whatever the duration might be that I want. So now I'm developing power as well as endurance. Right? So there's different ways that this can be applied. Okay? We can use different items, uh, a box for example, to utilize for our plyometrics. Right? So we can use this box for jump training, we can jump onto the box, we can jump off of the box, and being visually impaired does not prevent you from doing this type of movement. This is something I'm gonna teach you guys in a different instructional video, but box jumps are totally, totally doable when you're visually impaired. This is something that I'm gonna, gonna break the mold a little bit on, right? This is something we can all do. Um, you can do plyometrics with BOSU balls and stability balls and resistance bands and even additional weights, okay? So there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can apply it. And what I want you to walk away from this video with is an idea of, okay, if I was to do plyometrics, what would I do? Would I think about more of taking a little breather, trying to develop a lot of power and strength because I'm an athlete and I'm really working on developing power? Or are you thinking, I want a little more endurance. I'm more of an average gym goer, average fitness person, which nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I want to develop more cardio. I want to burn more calories. I'm going to think about doing, you know, the kind of a middle degree plyometric movement, not super duper explosive. And I'm going to do them for a duration of time. So those are the types of applications you can start to think about with these. Okay. Now, um, one more application piece to understand. This is the way that you wanna think about plyometrics in general, whether you're thinking about big explosive movements or kind of longer duration, lighter explosive movements, you're leaving the ground, okay? Simply put, plyometrics, you're leaving the ground. You need to make sure you're taking care of your joints and taking care of your body, okay? We want exercises that are hard on the muscles and easy on your joints. So anytime you're doing a plyometric, whether it's a little one or a big one, the idea is that you should always absorb the impact with your muscles. Stay light on your feet. Okay, if I'm gonna do that jump squat again, I'm gonna stay quiet here for a minute. I know I talk a lot. If I do this jump squat and my feet slap into the ground, I'm not doing the plyometric correctly, okay? Because that slap into the ground means there's jarring up into my ankles, it's going up into my knees and it's gonna hurt my joints. Now, when I do correctly, whether it's a, a jump or a push up or a pull up or a onto the box, off of the box, doesn't matter. It's all about that soft landing. It's all about landing with your knees flex, with your hips back slightly, landing on the balls of your feet so that you absorb that movement and your muscles take the tension. Okay. So when I jump, when I do a squat jump, I'm not going to land straight legged, 
okay? I am going to land in a crouched kind of squat position and absorb that movement. I'm gonna land softly so that you barely hear it and my knees bend, my hips bend. I almost land and come back down into a squat to absorb that movement. That's really, really crucial as you get into plyometric movements, understand that soft, soft, soft landing, okay? That'll protect your body. Great. Let me give you guys some examples and watch the YouTube channel. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you share this information out because I'm gonna be putting out some really good workouts involving plyometrics in the near future. And they're gonna show how to develop more power, how to develop more endurance. Like I said, if you're an athlete or an average gym goer, average fitness enthusiast, doesn't matter. I'm gonna put out some really cool workouts for you. This is just some instruction to help you kind of grasp the concept. Okay, let's go through a couple of examples, different ways that you can make exercises plyometric right now in your own workout. So, a lateral step to a lateral hop. Okay, lateral step, I'm standing up straight. I'm going to bend my knees slightly. I'm gonna push my hip back, some back. I'm gonna lean forward, put my elbows at my side. I'm kind of in a little bit of a crouched ready position. I'm gonna take a big step to my right, big step to my left. This is just a lateral step. Great movement for working on your hips and developing uh, lateral stability, okay? Now to make that a plyometric, I'm gonna leave the ground a little bit. I'm gonna hop to my right and I'm gonna hop to my left. I'm taking a big leap. So you can see that that movement takes a lot more strength. It takes a lot more push, okay? Push, we're increasing the intensity by creating more force and taking a bigger movement. Now again, as I do that, I'm making sure that that landing is soft. I'm not jabbing my foot into the floor. It's soft, soft, big step, soft, big, big leap to the side and keeping those, the, the feet and the, the knees flexed so that that absorbs that shock, okay? So lateral step to a lateral hop, creating more plyometric movement. Squat jump, okay, here's an example we already gave. Regular squat, I'm sitting down in a little chair, standing up straight, okay? Squat jump, I'm gonna come up hard enough and push off of my toes that I'm gonna leave the ground a little bit. And again, you guys can have some mid ground here. If this is like, Whoa, I don't know if you're still watching this video and you're like, you're still not real convinced. We can, we can come to this point where I'm gonna do a squat, I'm gonna come up, and I'm just gonna pop up on my toes. Okay, I didn't really leave the ground, but I'm driving up through my heels and then at the top, I'm just kind of popping up on my toes. I'm giving enough force that I'm coming up just a little bit. And then we can just work our way up from there. Coming down, leave the ground just an inch or two, and squat, jump. Squat, jump. I'm just leaving the ground a couple inches. We don't have to jump 100 feet in the air to make it a plyometric. When you're doing these movements, a lot of times, we're gonna have the arms as stabilizers or power additions, okay? So with a squat jump, okay, I can keep my arms at my side, that's okay, but you're gonna get a little more power if you squat down and then you reach up with your arms. Squat down, reach up with your arms. Use your arms for a little bit of power. We'll talk about that in more specific examples in future workouts. Okay, great. Let's talk a little bit about some upper body plyometric movements. Okay, and you're thinking, what in the world are you gonna do with your upper body to make it plyometric? Well, if we have a surface to do a push up on, now you can do this from the floor. Commonly, it's called a clap push up where you're pushing up so hard that you leave the ground, clap your hands, and then put them back down. Now, that can be a really tricky movement for even the best of athletes. But if you're in that push-up position and you come down and you wanna just do it about halfway where you push up, your hands leave the ground. You don't have to worry about that clap and you just leave the ground for a second and put your hands back down here, right? Where we're just leaving the ground for a second, okay? You pop up hard enough and you can kind of pop your hands up off the floor, put them back down, good to go. Modification to that, this is where most people will be. I've got a box here. I've got my hands up on the box, okay? Here's a modification to a box push-up. 
And if you guys are unfamiliar with the push-up movement, check out my instructional video on push-ups. Okay, so I'm going through this real quick, knowing that you guys have that resource. I'm not gonna fill in all the small details for a push-up today, but check out that video to make sure you guys are following, okay? I've got my modified position. I've got my hands up on a raised surface, and now I can do a plyo push-up from here, coming down, pushing up, and popping up off the box. I'm landing back on the box, pushing up, landing back on the box, okay? You can do it on a higher surface, on a lower surface. You can do it on the edge of the counter. That's gonna create more of that boom, explosive power. Okay, so a few examples of how we can take regular exercises, and make them plyometric exercises to both increase our strength and power and help us become better athletes, right? So I hope this video gave you a better idea of what plyometrics are about. I hope this expanded a little bit your ideas about how you can add in some of these movements to your own routines. And like I said, subscribe to this channel, share it, join the communities that we're putting together because there will be a lot more coming and I hope you guys are excited about that. I know I am. I wanna teach you guys some really cool workouts to make you better, okay? So from Revision Training, let's change the way we look at it. You guys make it a strong day.